Welcome to the video, and welcome to my new house. Well, the house isn't actually new. We moved in February 2021, and it's now in November 2021. So we've been here almost eight months. I thought it would be about time I show you around and give you a little tour. As we go through different spots around the house, I figure I'll go through some of the common questions that I always get about how to get started or things that are involved when you want to build here in the Philippines. So I often get asked, why did I build the house or what is my plan? For me, the plan is I bought two separate lots. There's one here and another one in another part of Dawis. This one is actually for my parents. So they have the downstairs, the big part of the house, and I have the little studio apartment upstairs. The idea is that for now, I'll stay there until the other house is built. And then at that point, they can use that room to either rent out, they can also have friends and family over, or at some point, if they need a live-in caretaker, that person can stay upstairs. One of the nice things about the design is that it does have separate entrances for both, but at the same time, they are connected. All right, it's starting to rain a little bit. Why don't we head inside and I can show you around the house. I'm not gonna show you too much around, especially in my parents' place. I kinda wanna keep that private for them. That's their own living space. But I will show you a few little shots and then I'll take you upstairs to where I'm staying. So from the front entrance, we have stairs that lead all the way up into my apartment. And on the right-hand side, another door headed into my parents' place. So the whole lot is actually 200 square meters. The house itself is a total of 68, 47 downstairs and 21 square meters upstairs. All right, let's head upstairs. And this is my little studio. So the quick tour of my place is obviously the bedroom. I have some closet space for mostly clothes, a bit of food and pantry items and electronics. This is where I do the work and edit videos. And this is the kitchen. It's pretty small, but it's enough just for one person, as well as a fairly decent sized bathroom. So another question I get asked quite a bit is, how do I buy a house as a foreigner? Personally, I am technically a foreigner, uh, from Canada, but my mom is Filipino. So the house and lot was actually purchased through her name. And then later on down the road, I will be working on getting my residency and then we can get everything switched over. As a foreigner, you do have a couple options to buy in the Philippines, although it's not as easy as it is in some other countries. One, you could either marry a Filipino. The other option is you could do it through a corporation, which can get kind of tricky, complicated, and sometimes expensive, but it is another option if you want to go that route. So another question I get asked is, how did I find this place? Basically, I found a real estate agent that I trusted. I did look around at a few, read some reviews and found someone that I thought I trusted. I reached out to them. It took a little while. I didn't buy the first lot that I saw. I wanted to make sure that I found one in a neighborhood that I liked that was easy access to either the beach or to town or to some of the tourist spots. And I also picked a subdivision that's lot only. Basically, you have two options. You can buy subdivisions where they build the houses for you, where you choose the design, or you can buy just the land only and you can build whatever you like. And that's what I did. So there are some pros and cons. I chose the lot only because for me, it had the most freedom. Some of the other lots, you're very restricted to what the design of the house looks like. They all usually have to match each other. And there's also extra expenses, whether there's a pool or security guards, that's another monthly expense you'd have to add on, which I don't have to do with my own lot. I think the rain has stopped a bit. Why don't we head outside and we can chat about the building process. One of the questions I had when I was buying the lot is how big is 200 square meters? It's kind of hard to see when you're just looking at it on paper. So why don't I throw the drone up so you can get an idea how big the lot is versus the house. Before we talk about the building process, why don't I walk around the house and show you a bit of my mom's garden. So 
So as I mentioned before, the lot size is 200 square meters and the footprint of the house is 68. So that gives us a lot of space for parking the car. We usually have my motorbike here, a lot of front yard garden space. Uh, and that's, this leads back into our Kubo. Have a lot more garden and plants. We have a Nipa Kubo. This is where we can hang out in the mornings and just relax. We also have a storage out in the back. This is usually locked up with just uh, things that we don't have room for in the house, as well as uh, water collection from the roof and our Richley water, which is our main source of drinking water. We also have a little bit of a space for doing our laundry. And then around this side of the house is a lot more garden space. And one last thing on this side is we also have a barbecue and our compost. So for the building process, we actually went through a friend of a friend who was both the architect as well as the builder. That just made everything a little bit simpler because they were able to know, understand our vision and we were able to change things as we go very easily. He was the one that created the 3D mock-ups, the blueprints, as well as hired all the workers that were going to work on the house. Another great thing is that he's the one that helped get all of our permits. There's so many different permits and paperwork that you need to get done. It's great to have somebody there to help you out with that. So before we wrap up this video, here's a couple last things to think about before you buy a house in the Philippines. First is if you're a foreigner, there really is no mortgage. You're going to need those funds available before you start building. Second, you're going to want to think of the extra costs that are going to pop up. There's always something. For us, some of the extra costs happen to be needing to put in poles to get the electrical lines here, adding a second tank for the water collection, uh, changes to the fence and that sort of thing. And the third thing you're going to want to think about is whether or not it's going to be easy to get utilities to your lot. Some lots may already have that included. Other ones, if they're farther away, you're going to need to dig lines for your water, put up poles for your electricity, and may or may not have a good Wi-Fi connection. So you'll want to check those things out before you actually buy the land. The fourth thing you're going to want to look at is making sure that the lot has a clean title. The last thing you want to do is buy the lot and find out that there's actually issues with the previous owners and you'll have to deal with that in the future. And the last thing is road access. Make sure that the lot that you have does have some sort of right of way if it's not right next to a main road. You really don't want to get stuck boxed in with no way to get in or out of your lot. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions or comments about building a house in the Philippines, please put it in the comments below and I'll do my best to do another follow-up video and answer more of your questions. I hope you have an awesome week and I'll see you next time.